Greetings everyone and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be discussing Fritjof Skion's essay, The Degrees of Art. And I'm just going to be giving you a summary of it and an overview of how it represents Skion's philosophy of art. So let's just get started, shall we? So Skion starts off the essay by distinguishing between the two perfections of art, which he terms the perfection of surface and the perfection of depth. And I'm just going to quote him now when he says, at surface level, the work must be well done in conformity with the laws of the art and the demands of the style. In depth, it must be able to communicate the reality which it expresses. So basically for Skion, these are the two most important things for any true work of art. It must be both proficiently made and it must be able to communicate deeper meanings to the perceptor. Skewon then makes the point that any creation of an artwork is also a creation of an artist and that when uh, an artist creates a piece of work, he is also really developing himself and realizing himself. In Skewon's words, the artist becomes the essence by realizing the form, so that the artist sort of becomes the art which he has created. Skewon then makes the distinction, which is basically the most important part of the essay, between sacred art and profane art and he thinks that there is a great difference between these two types and that the true artist will create sacred art while all other art can be called profane. Um, so let's just clarify what he means by sacred art. Basically he thinks that sacred art is able to reveal the presence of God and that profane art does the exact opposite. So sacred art reveals a celestial presence and it sort of manifests God in its beauty, while profane art just provides what he terms sensible consolations, which he thinks that might help the perceptor find some balance and some equilibrium in their daily life. But he does not really approve of this in terms of it being uh, worthwhile. He just compares this to the manner that flowers can provide beauty or, or birds chirping can. In other words, it can be pretty and it can provide some sort of beauty, but it's not true art and it's not really the kind that he values. One part of the essay that struck me in particular was the part where Skewan says that no art in itself is a human creation, but sacred art has this particularity that its essential content is a revelation. So basically, for sacred art, the, the artist isn't really creating at all, but he's letting God come in him and create the work of art through him. Now, obviously, most people don't conceive of this, but for Skewon, it could be that the artist isn't even conscious of this process, and that when God creates the art through the true artist, that they aren't even aware of it. Skewon points out that there are two pitfalls that can trouble sacred art, and he terms these a virtuosity tending towards the outward and the superficial, and a conventionalism without intelligence and without soul. So in regard to the first, a virtuosity tending towards the outward and the superficial, what he basically means is that if art is too concerned with pleasing others and fulfilling what would be deemed good art in, ter in terms of the time when it was created, it is not likely to resonate with the perceptor as much and it is not really as valuable as art that is created from a center of authenticity in the artist. And he also references conventionalism without intelligence and without soul. So basically, if you think of a pop song that is just bland as heck and that you can't really notice anything dis distinct about it, then the art isn't going to be as valuable to the viewer or the hearer. So there's obviously endless pop songs these days and many of them are just so dull and uninteresting that Skewon would not conceive them as being true sacred art and actually very few pop songs he would probably conceive as being sacred art. From Skewon's point of view, quite little art in our modern day is sacred, although he does think that originally every piece of art was sacred and he thinks this is because in in our time, God and religion no longer really appeal to us and that religious art can appear fake and a feat and it's no longer as meaningful as it once was. Whether when the first artist was starting to experiment 
everything that they made was endowed with an element of the sacred and there was no real difference between um, creating a piece of art and worshipping God. Skion views the creation of sacred art as a joyous experience and he thinks that anybody too rationalistically trying to create or produce a psychologically useful object is misled. In his view, when the true artist creates, he is uniting himself with God and he is letting God use him as a voice. I should also say for anybody who is not familiar with Skion, that by God he's not referring to an anthropomorphic deity, but as a perennialist. He views God as ineffable and beyond religion, basically. So for him, God is just everything that exists. He is the universe. He's kind of a pantheist in this way. Skion views beauty in art as a manifestation of God. In his words, beauty, whatever use man may make of it, fundamentally belongs to its creator, who through it projects into the world of appearances something of his being. In other words, for Skion, art is able to pierce the material world and give the viewer an impression of the deity. And he refers to Maya here, which is a Hindu concept referring to the illusions of sensual experience in contrast to the true reality. And he thinks that art is really the main tool that we have as humans to overcome this barrier and perceive the reality of God. The last point I want to make is that for Skion, art is the tool that humans have for reconnecting with our pre-embodied divine selves. So for Skion, art is truly something holy that we need to reconnect with the sacred realm as to him we are exiled from that place because we cannot receive or perceive God in the material world. And now I just want to quote him when he says, when creating, man must project himself into matter in his ideal and spiritual personality, not in his state of fall, so that he may afterwards be able to repose his soul and his spirit in a framework that reminds him in a gentle and holy manner of what he must be. Right, that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. Personally, I find Skuan's aesthetic theory very interesting, and it reminds me quite a bit of Plato and the world of forms. Um, I do not think anybody can really say whether they're a sacred artist or a profane artist, but it's certainly very interesting to look at the world of modern art in all its forms and to consider how these type of theories in aesthetics can apply to it, because we don't usually think of art that, um, that we perceive, for example, Netflix. We don't think that that could offer us something sacred, but to skew on every form of art really has the potential to reveal to us something about the divine, and I find that really interesting. Please subscribe to my channel if you're interested in hearing me talk about philosophy and classics and all types of things. I've got tons of interests that I'm thinking about covering on this channel. And I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.